Run right up your engine! If you remember a couple weeks ago, I was working on his Acura, the battery would drain if it sat for a few days. And I found out that by removing one fuse, the battery drain went away. It's been a couple of weeks, the thing starts when it sits for a week or two, so I know that fixed it. But unfortunately, that stupid fuse, in this case it's fuse number 23 that went here, 20 amp fuse, powers a whole bunch of stuff including the infotainment system. As you can see, we turn it on, car starts and runs fine, but that's all dead. Completely dead. So, I sincerely doubt my customer wants to drive his car like that. But, this is kind of an interesting situation. Because, when you put that fuse back in, everything works perfectly fine. But, when you park the car, it starts draining the battery. I'm going to have an interesting fixer. Using a toggle switch, some wire, and a fuse. Now, he had been disconnecting the battery cable. He's got one of those battery cable disconnects. This just unscrews you take it off, but that's kind of a pain. You can pull that number 23 fuse out when he stopped the car and put it back in, but that's a pain too. So, I'm going to hook a switch up to that fuse. Going to rewire it so that when he's driving a car, he just has to flip the switch on, and then when he shuts it off, he has to remember to turn it off. Then it won't drain the battery, and that'll all be inside the car. As they say, where there's a will, there's a way. Now we gotta put the switch inside the car, so the first thing we gotta do is drill a hole in a firewall to run the wires through. So we'll drill a hole in a firewall here. And if you do this nice long screwdriver, we'll stick it in a hole. Not much working room under here, but there's enough. There we go. Then we'll go out of the car and see what came out. There it is. Now we just have to attach a wire to it. And here's the easy way of doing it. You get the wire on a spool and you tape it on the end of your little screwdriver. Tape it on the end nice and firmly and wrap it around a few times so it doesn't come loose. Then cut it off. Got a little razor blade for that. There you go. Now when you poke it through, the wire will follow it. Now in this case, I can't even get my arm in there without taking half the car apart, but I'm not going to. I got one of these long grabbers. That's going to grab the wire. So I stick it in there. Where there's a will, there's a way. There's one wire. And we're going to stick another one because all we're doing is connecting the two sides of the fuse together. Fish number two wire through and clamp it. Here we go. There's number two. Then we'll cut that wire off the spool. Now we have two ends on the inside and two ends on the outside. As for under the hood, we're just going to put ends on these wires and we're going to plug them into the little fuse. That way when we connect them to the fuse box, the fuse is pulled out. Those two wires go inside where there's a switch. When you close the switch, that's like plugging the fuse in. When you turn the switch off, that's like unplugging them. So you can do it by just flipping the switch without dealing with this nonsense. Now what you do here is you cut off the insulation and get one of these male ends that crimps on here. So you can plug it into where the fuse was. Now once you have it in, you want to crimp it on really good. They make crimping machines too, but big pliers work perfectly fine. You crimp it on super tight. And now as you can see, it's crunched in there. It's not coming off. And this end just plugs into one side of where the fuse was. Right there. Then we get the other wire and do the same thing. We just strip the end off. Try and get all that plastic off. You strip it off and clamp this end on. When we connect the two wires inside to the switch, and of course for safety, that was for a 20 amp fuse, so we're going to put an inline fuse with 20 amps in it, so we'll still have the same safety with the 20 amp fuse. Then we'll splice these wires, take the end off here, and put little eyelets on them, crunch them on, so we can screw them into the switch. Same as before, we get the old big pliers and crunch them down, get them super tight. Ah. Then that wire just screws onto the switch, put the screw in a hole, and tighten it on the switch. Tiny little screws are always a pain to get on, but now one side's on. Now on the other side, like I said, we're going to put a 20 amp fuse. Same as the fuse that was in it. So we'll just connect this wire to the switch, and then the other wire to this. So we'll strip this end a little bit more, and put the little eyelet in the hole, clamp it down just like the other one. Now it's nice and tight, and we'll screw it onto the switch. Why is it the screwdrivers always disappear when you need them? Then we screw that end in. Then when you turn the switch on, it'll let power go to all the things that weren't working. But we don't want it draining the car when you shut it off, so you just shut this off when you shut the car off. And of course, connect that wire to the black wire. So now it's a complete circuit. And before we put it all back together, let's see if it works now. We'll turn the switch on, and start the car. We'll start it up. And lo and behold, here comes our navigation system. 
Everything's working again. Before the power locks weren't working either, let's try them now. Ah, now they're working. Now the only thing you have to remember is when you shut off the car, you're also going to have to turn this switch off. And of course, the switch isn't going to be lying there. We're going to drill a hole under here and mount it. Now when you consider that figuring out what has shorted out when you stop the car, we know it's that fuse, but that fuse operates like 12 different things. Tearing the car all apart, and let's say it's the navigation system that costs thousands of dollars on this car, what the heck. Now you can just flip a switch on, flip a switch off. When you shut the car off, you turn it off. When you start it up, you turn it on. And if you forget to turn it off and you leave it for weeks, it'll drain the battery. But if you're just going to the store and stuff, it takes a long time to drain it, so you don't have to do it every time. Just remember, when you permanently shut the car off, shut that off. Then we got a drill, drill a hole in the plastic here so the switch can fit in. Of course, it goes the other way. As I say, now this just pushes in backwards. And we'll put the little piece on that says on and off, in case you get confused. On is top, off is down. Then we'll get some of these twist ties and we'll put them on the wires so they don't hit anything. All nice and snug, now there's no wires. Cut this off so you don't see that and it doesn't look sloppy. Off it comes. Now you got a nice neat thing. On, off. And you can see when we turn it on, now the door lights work. This still has the 20 amp fuse so it's perfectly safe. And when you want everything to work, just flip the switch. But when you're gonna park it for a while, turn the switch off. Where there's a will, there's a way. Even with these ridiculously complex Acura computerized system, you can bypass a lot of them with simple little switches if you just know a little bit about electricity. So now you know, the next time you got an electrical problem in your car, maybe you'll get lucky like I did and fix it with a little toggle switch, some wire, and a fuse. And here's some bonus questions and answers. Big Daddy Jody says, can replacing a gasket cause too much pressure and hold your engine? A guy told me to change the intake manifold gasket, it could cause other problems. Okay, well, find another mechanic, that guy's an idiot. The intake manifold gasket, no, if it's leaking, you replace it. Now, a head gasket, yes, but that's a completely different gasket. The head gasket is between the head where the valves and the cams are and the block of the engine. All that pressure is in there. And yes, if the head gasket blows, let's say you put a new one in, then that strains the valves, seals more. It strains the valves, it strains the piston rings because it's sealing better now. That's why if you're going to rebuild an engine, you rebuild the whole engine or just give up and get another car. Because you do partial rebuild, stupid. You got an engine that's got a lot of mileage and the head gasket blows, odds are there's other worn parts. You should either rebuild the whole thing, give up with the car, or try another engine. Rebuilding engines is an art, it takes a lot of skill and a lot of money. Most people don't want to spend the money. A lot of the mechanics that try to do it don't have the skill, so it's not a smart thing to rebuild them much anymore. But an intake manifold gasket, no, that isn't going to hurt anything. The guy's a horrible mechanic. Don't go back to them. Billy Bob Geron says I got a 2011 Jeep Patriot four-wheel drive. It won't crank and I can't shift it into park. I checked the cable, it's there. Transmission range sensor to let you crank it is in, bolts on top of the transmission. You said it's there. So I'll tell you, I don't know how long you've owned that vehicle, but I've had guys screw around with those things, take them off road, mess up the wiring system. You looked at the transmission range sensor. Check the wires coming off of it. Many times those get knocked going off road. Wires get ripped, torn. Check that, because the last one I fixed, a bunch of wires had been ripped apart and I had to rewire it. So, you know, green with red goes to green with red, so you splice them together. So wherever they're broken, they are color coded. You can just splice new wire in, solder it up, put a little heat, shrink tape, heat it up with a hair dryer, close it so water doesn't get to it. Odds are that's your problem if it's actually there. You don't see anything missing. The guys generally beat the heck out of it. I'm assuming you're probably not the original owner, and if you aren't, who knows what the previous people have done with it, especially if they took it off-road. Always check the wiring on those things on the bottom where open stuff is where they can get hit and whacked and knocked off. Lee Ezra 315 says, I was walking near my house, I saw a Mercedes park. I was surprised the driver's door was open. There wasn't anybody inside, so I tried to close the door because I'm a gentleman. Thing is, it wouldn't close. I tried, but then I gave up and went back to my house. <laughs> Yeah, I guess Mercedes can't even make door hinges that work anymore. They probably pop the door hinges and they don't close anymore. Their quality, I mean, they're living on a name, just like Jeep is living on a name. Harley Davidson is living on a name. It's been a long time since they were state-of-the-art nice vehicles, uh, and they're just living on a name, and I see that time and time and time again. There's a $120,000 S Mercedes for sale down the street, and they're 
asking 3900 and they can't even get the head for the car. They're not what they used to be. <laughs> kind of a funny story. The door won't even close. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.